folks, Jordan here with another software overview video. Today we're looking at Ubuntu 1504 Vivid Verdit, released on the 23rd of April 2015. Now there's not too much exciting with this release, so we're going to jump right into it. Now there's one major difference that I cannot really explain, but I can visually show here on the video, and that is during the boot up process, it doesn't use upstart, which was the event-based replacement for the traditional init daemon. Because, uh, of course, that's what many traditional Unix-like computer operating systems do when they're starting up. So I press the down arrow on boot up here, as you can see. And as you can tell, as it starts up, you can see all the startup processes and services starting up here. Now, in this particular release of Ubuntu, which is probably not the most noteworthy thing, but still noteworthy to talk about nonetheless is system D. Now that is, to keep it short, a suite of software that provides a fundamental building block for, or blocks actually more rather, for Linux OS's because it allows for many different awesome things that again I really don't know and can't explain. I'm just saying stuff to have a filler in this video. So my apologies for that. But anyway, Another change was locally integrated menus replacing previously used global menus, which I swear I think I've talked about in previous videos, but it's another change inside of this particular release. But again, I can't recall if I've ever taken a look at that particular change in a previous release. So you're gonna have to bear with me on that one. Oh God, the button I need to click is off the screen. Oh geez. Typical. All right, we got our lovely Vervet right there, and he's in a bright, vivid orange. You'll also see the background is slightly different in terms of its color scheme. The pattern itself really isn't that much different. It just has a different color scheme, a little bit more vibrant purple than the last one was, which was more of a muted purple and orange combination. So traditional Ubuntu colors are now becoming a little more vivid, hence the name Vivid Vervet. That was a terrible joke. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let this install since, as per usual with these more modern Ubuntu releases, well, there's not much to talk about in the slideshow. I mean, I could run through it briefly and show you all what's new, but we've already seen all this stuff before, and so there's really no point in going through it again and again and again. So... I'm going to go ahead and shut up and let this finish installing, and I will meet you all at the login screen. So never mind the last problem. Here we are at the login screen. So go ahead and log on in here. And presto, here we are at the desktop. So let's see if we can find anything that is crucially different, except a pixelated Amazon icon. Man, that looks terrible. Although I blame the low screen resolution for that, other than, you know, the actual like main menu there causing that. So we're gonna go our lovely 1360 by 768 resolution. And now we can move on. So I think we'll switch things up a little bit. Let's first launch good old LibreOffice, the spreadsheet one. I forget what they call that. LibreOffice Calc, that's what they called it. So here we have our lovely Excel program. It's all lovely and hunky-dory. What's the version? It is 4.4.2.2 and uh, looks good to me very nice and 
What's our version of Firefox? It doesn't have the Firefox Quantum logo. That wasn't until a much later release, sometime last year, I think, or earlier this year, one of the two. Let's see, what are we running? Firefox 37. Sounds good to me. Of course, this was back in the day when it heavily looked like Google Chrome and was slower than Sin. And, of course, our typical lovely incomplete language support, because that's really important now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, let's see what else is different. Uh, the dash... It's the same transparent dash as before. Of course, it looks pretty much identical. Just as slow as ever, as we all know. Although, I guess I didn't click that. That might help if I actually clicked it, you know. You know. <laughs> anyway. One thing I also wanted to check was the browser. The little built-in Ubuntu browser, since it's based on a form of Chromium. And I wanted to check which version it is, because it really doesn't make itself obvious. But maybe... No, it doesn't really say... This must be some kind of mobile design program, hence the minimalistic user interface. This had to have been designed with tablets in mind. So, just like before, I'm going to go check the what is my browser thing and see what version it is. This is based on Chromium, but I don't know what version. In this case, it's based on Chromium 35. Sounds good to me. And the reason why I point this out is because, um, and I also demonstrated this in my last video, but the web apps are based on that browser. So they have a minimalistic user interface, as you can see. They use that very same Ubuntu uh, web browser thing. So that's why I wanted to point that out. Let's check the software center real quick, although I think it's the same thing as before. Yeah, pretty much the same thing as before. Now, the reason why I'm pointing this Software Center thing out um, as being like broken and whatnot in some of these releases is because in 1604, as far as I remember, they actually switched the Software Center out. They used a completely different form of the Ubuntu Software Center comparative to uh, previous releases. They've used GNOME software instead of the Ubuntu Software Center, and we'll talk about that when the release for that particular update comes out. And of course, that's what they use nowadays in modern Ubuntu. The file browser looks the same as ever, and that's always exciting. Let's see what kind of desktop wallpapers this release has. Of course, I used in this particular release, which one did I use? I used this wallpaper for the thumbnail in this particular release. But there's also some pretty nice ones too, like the Christmas lights. They look pretty cool, I suppose. Then you have Tenerife, Roque, de Anaga which I think that's a painting of some kind. And then we have Tesla, which is a spinning vinyl record amid some lights. Oyster Catcher and the Rocks, which as you can see there. Euphoria, which is some kind of like live concert picture. Now, as far as I'm aware, some of these wallpapers are user submitted into the Ubuntu wallpaper thing. And this one's got some kind of date on it, like March 5th, of 2015 or May 3rd of 2015 however they decide to lay the date out and um, a lot of these are user submitted photos like photography and whatnot so that's something to keep in mind now there are a couple of different themes which I actually have not been taking a look at now there's this light theme called radiance the other one's called ambience and of course there is the usual high contrast theme and for use for with high accessibility needs in mind. And I actually don't mind the Radiance theme. I think that looks pretty nice. Not gonna lie. Definitely cleans up the user interface quite a bit, especially with this clear uh, color going for it. I like that. But anyway, that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video as always, since in these more modern releases of Ubuntu, at least for right now, there's really not too much to talk about with new features. And thus, it really doesn't make much sense to keep sitting here and you know doing these videos on these and making them entertaining I suppose I'm hoping that when we reach Ubuntu 1604 LTS it will be a little bit more exciting because right now these are basically just maintenance releases so with that having been said I'm gonna go ahead and shut down this virtual machine and we'll wrap up this video so I'd like to thank you all for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to click the like button down below subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one, and I will catch you all in the next video. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.